everyone, in this video I'm going to be discussing how to horizontally estimate two individual curves in order to find one market demand curve. All up I'm going to be doing two videos on this topic. The first video, which is this one, is going to be the construction of the diagram, so showing the market demand curve itself. The second is going to be about working out the algebraic representation of that diagram that we're going to draw today. So let's get started on video one. In my example, I have two hypothetical individuals, Mark and Ben, whose demand curves are represented by the equations P is equal to 10 minus 5Q and P is equal to 5 minus Q respectively. In my example, the market itself consists of just Mark and Ben. So I'll put here market is Mark plus Ben. I'm going to break up the task into three steps. In the first step, I'm just going to draw out each individual demand curve next to each other, making sure that I have the vertical and horizontal axis intercepts labeled. So if you want to skip this part, then that's fine. Here is the time to skip to in order just to go straight to step two. Okay, good. If you're still with me, I'm going to draw the two axes next to each other, just like this. And I'll actually draw one more, which is going to be my market demand curve axes, which I'll look at later. Since our demand equations are expressed with P isolated on the left hand side, we can take the constant terms here as our vertical axis intercepts. So I'll just write down some markers for Mark and that's 10. If this is all crazy for you and if you are unsure about how to draw demand curves from algebraic ex equations, I'm not going to go through this very slowly here, but I'll put a link to a separate video that um, shows this skill in more, more depth. Okay, good, and Ben's vertical axis intercept is five here. Okay, good, so we have our vertical axis intercepts. To find our quantity axis intercepts, we just substitute P is equal to zero into both equations. So for Mark, if we do this, we get zero is equal to 10 minus five Q. Adding five Q to both sides, we find five Q is equal to 10. Dividing both sides by five, we get Q is equal to two. So that's good. For Ben, we do the same thing. So if P is equal to zero, then zero is equal to five minus Q. Adding Q to both sides, we get Q is equal to five, and there we have it. So if we draw a line between these intercepts for both individuals, we get our downward sloping demand curves for, for each of these individuals. And that's step one finished, so that's good. The second step is just to construct our quantity axis intercept. And I do it like this because I think this is an easy step to take. Now, as we just saw, the quantity axis intercept for Mark is two and for Ben, it is five. Now, let's just think about what our demand curves are doing here. They're giving us the relationship between the price of a good and the amount that is demanded for each individual at each one of those prices. So the quantity axis intercepts can be interpreted as telling us how much each individual would demand if the price was zero. So if the price was zero, Mark is demanding two units and Ben is demanding five. But remember the market consists only of Mark and Ben. So it follows from this that in the market, if the price is zero, then the amount demanded in the market would be seven. That is two units from Mark's demand and five units from Ben's. I hope that that's clear what we're doing. If the logic is clear, you can start to see why it's called horizontal summation here. We are summing up the quantities that each individual is demanding, where quantity is the hor horizontal variable. And the trick is we're just going to look at that horizontal summation for a range of prices or the prices that are relevant. And so in step three, now that we have the horizontal sum for price is equal to zero, we're going to continue to do this uh, for the other important prices. The super easy way to do this is to just take notice of the vertical axis intercepts for each individual and horizontally summate at those points. Okay, so let's mark those prices on the market diagram. These are gonna be our two special prices. Okay, so we're going to start with summating at that lower price first. And I find it's really useful to draw a line across at that point. So at price five, we know that Ben demands zero. We can see that quite clearly here. But extending our line across, we see that Mark demands some positive amount. And if we draw our line down, it looks like he demands about one at this price. 
So to find out for sure, we're going to substitute P is equal to five into Mark's demand curve. That's going to tell us how much Mark is demanding at price is equal to five. If we do that, we find five is equal to 10 minus five Q. If we take away 10 from both sides, we get negative five is equal to negative five Q. And dividing both sides by negative five, we find that Q is equal to one. So at price is equal to five, Mark demands one unit. And as we said before, at price is equal to five, Ben demands zero units. So in the market, which is just Mark plus Ben, we get one unit in total being demanded at P is equal to five. So we have this point now here, which we can place on our market demand curve. I hope that makes sense for you guys. Okay, good, so let's just do this last price, this last important price is equal to 10. And I hope that you will be able to gauge here is that for the prices above five and below 10, Mark is definitely demanding some quantity, some positive quantity, but Ben will not. At 10, Mark is demanding zero. This is the highest price in which his demand curve extends to. And so in the market, the highest price that the demand curve will extend to is 10 as well. And further, since the market demand curve is the horizontal sum of the two individual demand curves, we can deduce that the market demand curve for prices above five below 10 is going to look exactly like Mark's individual curve for prices above five below 10, because Ben isn't doing anything uh, within these prices. So we join these points together and we get the correct shape for our top half. And once we connect the middle point with our Q axis intercepts that we found in that second step, uh, we give ourselves a, like, a big clap here because that's it, that's our demand curve. Okay, good, so that's our market demand curve. Um, I hope you can see here that really the determinant of the kink is going to be the vertical axis intercept. If we had two individuals who stopped demanding at the same price, we wouldn't get uh, the kink that we can see here in our market demand curve here. I hope that's all clear. I hope that the video helped. The only thing left is to represent this diagram algebraically, that is to do it in math. And I'm going to do that in a second video. In the meantime, I hope that you liked the video and, and you enjoyed it. Please have a look at my channel. Please like and subscribe. I hope that you're studying economics. I hope you keep at it. Have a great day or night.